Hi, I'm Matt Savage, Executive Tour Director of the World Poker Tour and Tournament Director for many of the stops on the World Poker Tour. All right, Matt, tell me a little bit about how you got into this business. Uh, I actually started off as a player and a bad one, and that's how I ended up working. Uh, I was playing at a local casino here in San Jose and uh, you know, found out that you could make a lot of money if you were just working in the industry. So at the time I started by running chips. I was selling chips and, uh, to the players and uh, I enjoyed it. But uh, as time went on I decided that I needed to become something more important and, and that was a dealer. So I went into dealing. I was a poker dealer for about three years until I developed Carpal Tunnel. And then from there I uh, moved to the floor, assistant tournament director and then tournament director. When you became a tournament director, is that something you really enjoyed right off the bat? And what made you get so involved with all the feedback from the players? Because now you're kind of the go-to guy. Yeah, uh, when I became a tournament director, obviously I, I enjoyed it because I was already running a golf tournament, which I had started the, about that time. Uh, but I love the interaction with the people, uh, and I love the excitement of poker tournaments. So that really is what got me turned on to, to doing this and hoping to you know become even better and do bigger events. When you heard the World Poker Tour had begun, what did you think of all of that? Uh, I was there for the initial meetings for the World Poker Tour in which Steve Lipscomb uh, came around and uh, talked to different properties with the idea and everybody was kind of uh, a little curious about it, but at the same time it was an exciting opportunity. So, uh, you know, I was always pushing wherever I was at to do that, which at the time was Lucky Chances. Take me through the first WPT at Lucky Chances and what that whole experience was like the first day leading up to it, what were you expecting? Every Wednesday and Friday we have live No Limit games, 10, 10, 20 blinds with a thousand dollar buy-in. What that means is, at any one time, you can lose all of your chips on one hand. It was incredible, it's a real small property as far as World Poker Tour standards go. So uh, we had to like bury the final table in this little area in the corner. So uh, it was exciting, you know, it was only a $3,000 event, but it was really big at that time. And uh, you know, it was fun because Everybody was coming to my hometown little casino, which was Lucky Chances, and so I, uh, I, I loved it. I thought it was great. Um, obviously, the tournament went off very smoothly and successfully, um, but uh, at the same time, uh, it was just very strange to look back on that now. Now that the World Poker Tour is what it is, and you are the executive tour director, what made you want to join the team and get on board with them? Well, I'd always talked to Steve Lipscomb about joining the World Poker Tour years ago, but it was always that he wanted me to be exclusive. You know, now that Steve Heller took over uh, as the CEO, he really gave me the opportunity to do this, yet still continue with what I was already doing. So for me, that made it, uh, you know, a perfect match. Obviously, I love the World Poker Tour. I think they've done so many great things for poker, and, you know, I wanted to be a part of it. What are the biggest changes that you've seen from the beginning of the World Poker Tour until now when we're in Season 11? Well, I think for sure, I think the players have changed. I think that the, the level of skill has gone way up. But at the same time, I think, you know, they still see properties here like at Bay 101 where there's still a lot of excitement when the World Poker Tour comes to town. It's that one time a year where people that are locals really look forward to the stars uh, joining them at the tables. What's your fondest memory of a World Poker Tour, whether you were there or something you've watched, a memory? From, you know, the show. I mean, I have to say my fondest memory uh, on the World Poker Tour was the first year we were here at the Bay 101. Uh, it was at the final table, and it's the first time in a major event that I can remember or, or ever hear of two people busting out on the final hand. And Chris Moneymaker was one of those players. Phil Gordon won the tournament, but two people busted on the final hand. Uh, we had the, uh, the show you the money, uh, uh, show us the money clip that had to actually be done after the tournament because we never got it in the show. Champion of the Shooting Star Tournament at the Bay 101, Phil Gordon. The growth of the World Poker Tour has been incredible. Obviously, you know, now that it was just kind of a small little tour uh, that went to all of some of the best properties uh, in the United States, and now it's a global uh, thing, you know, with the regionals and the nationals and everything that's going on. You know, I think the World Poker Tour has made a lot of stars and a lot of people pretty famous. Uh, not only in poker, but around the world. I mean, some of the players that play on the World Poker Tour are internationally known, and it's fun to travel with them because, uh, you know, they're big stars. So it makes it even more exciting, and it should be a dream a lot of the players that are upcoming today.